everyone and welcome to another session of Talk the Walk with Bharatwani. I am Sapna Bakshi, your host for today's session. Today we are joined by Dr. Neem Kumar. He is a distinguished professor and senior Canada research chair at the University of British Columbia. He also leads the India-Canada Center for Innovative Multidisciplinary Partnerships to Accelerate Community Transformation and Sustainability as its scientific director and CEO. We welcome Dr. Neem Kumar. So to begin with, uh, all of us uh, want to know about your early life, education and journey so far. Sure, uh, certainly, well, thank you for the opportunity. It's a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to talk to you. And thanks for your interest in our research and our work. And Our pleasure. So I am a professor here at the University of British Columbia and also serve as the scientific director and CEO for uh, Canada India Research Center of Excellence called IC Impacts. Uh, you can please visit our website, it's icimpacts.com. Now about my personal life, uh, my great great grandparents migrated from Bikaner in Rajasthan. So I'm originally from Rajasthan, but they migrated to Maharashtra. And I was born in a very small village in Maharashtra called Kamti, which is just the outskirts of Nagpur. So this is, this is where I was born. Uh, it's an old cantonment area in the outskirts of Nagpur. And then I went to school in Nagpur, uh, then to IIT Delhi, I know you know Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Yeah. And then I came here to University of British Columbia to do my PhD. So uh, that's been the journey so far. And I've been here as a professor uh, for many years now. So, so uh, while we were reading about some of your research, uh, uh, like sustainable concrete infrastructure and waste recycling or earthquake strengthening, uh, what really caught our attention was your innovation on roads that are self-repairing and sustainable. So mm -hmm. would you like to elaborate on this uh, innovation? Certainly. So uh, our focus has been on rural roads, on roads in small villages and small towns. Now, let me give you a little bit of a statistic, I think, which will really put the whole thing in perspective. Uh, so India has as the second largest road network after the United States. I'm sure you're aware of that, that India has the most extensive yeah. road network, even more than China, actually, because we are a highly populated country. So our total roads currently are about 5.23 million kilometers and only 3.17 million kilometers are paved. So you can imagine, you know, you have a road which is there, but it's not paved. There is nothing on it. So you can imagine in monsoon, the whole road becomes a marshy land and things like that. Now, what that means is 40% of our roads in India remain unpaved, which is a very big problem, actually. Now, you move the focus to rural roads now. Majority of our roads in India, you know, I cited this number of 5.23 million kilometers. Majority of that are rural roads. Okay, so okay. about 60% are actually rural roads, almost 3.2 million kilometers, but over 60% of those rural roads are not paved. Now think about it, you go to a small village, it may have a road, but there is no pavement on it. There's absolutely no uh, you know, surfacing on it. So that's a major issue. And so we have been focusing on rural roads particularly, and I'll tell you exactly why. But I think in economic terms, what we believe is that there is a 35% reduction in the GDP of India because of lack of road network in the small villages, 35%. It's a very large number. So I think if India wants to grow and become a you know, superpower, I think we need to start putting this transportation system, this transportation infrastructure in place. The rural connectivity is very important. There is an inability for rural habitants to take their goods outside. They cannot, you know, go to the large markets to sell their vegetables, to sell their milk. And I think have remained, as a result, they have remained poor and your rural economy has remained stagnant and really underperforming. So key, I mean, it may seem like a small thing to build a road, but I will demonstrate to you that if you build a road, you can actually spur the rural economy very, very rapidly. 
And I think this is what we are, you know, we are after. So our innovation, you know, which is going to really address this very large problem, we designed a self-healing, super thin concrete road. Self-healing, super thin concrete road, and which would last five times longer than the current service life of roads. See, currently, you a village, you build it within two years, the road is completely washed out. You have these wonderful potholes in there, I think, that you can play in. But if you really look at this system, what we were interested in was to design a road which would last five times longer. But that's not all. Its first time cost is also less, which means that we are not spending a lot of money on innovation initially, you know, and its okay. first time cost is also less. So what we believe this technology and i'll come to the technology in a very in a, in a second but what we believe is that super thin um, very durable uh, roads self heating roads <clears throat> save up to 30 billion dollars in first time cost for the country if you were to now pave all of the villages for example with this particular roads and last thing i would say before i get to this technology is that it's low carbon it's low carbon, which means that it has no emissions, very low emissions, actually. It's a very sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, process. So we are also saving emissions and we are using a lot of industrial byproducts, which make it very sustainable. So it's not new materials. We are using a lot of byproducts which are coming from other industries. So think about this as a system now. Now, coming to the self-healing, the self-healing comes, just to give you a brief overview, I mean, it's a complex thing which we have been working on for 20 years now. But the key to that is fiber reinforcement. What we're using in the concrete itself, in this material, is a large amount of fibers. Now, fibers are actually used in a number of things. As you know, your badminton racket probably has carbon fiber in it. We use car you know, glass fiber, carbon fiber in a lot of things. So this is a concrete which has got a lot of fiber reinforcement in it. So it keeps the cracks narrow. So the fibers actually help the cracks narrow. On the second thing, it has a certain coating on it, which is, okay. an, which is a nano coating. The moment it comes in contact with water, it mm -hmm. creates the same parent material in large volumes, which fills the cracks. So the key oh. is fibers, the key is this coating, the moment it comes in contact with water, it could be monsoon rain or whatever, all these cracks get filled up because we are generating enough amount of this expansive material to fill the cracks. So this is how we are actually working. So that entire, so the entire process is of self-healing kind of, like self-repairing and healing. Exactly, exactly. So this, it's a very, it, it's a simple system, but it's a cute system that we have, we are able to reproduce that same material. Like your body, you know, when you have a fracture in your bone, your body heals. So this is what we call biomimic systems or, or, or self-healing biological systems. We have made our road to start thinking like that. So there is a crack, let me generate some material so yeah. that I can heal the crack. And we have put this village, as you know, in Tondibhavi in Karnataka. So we built this one kilometer road in Karnataka. It's in uh, south, just, just about two hours from Bangalore. And it was built in 2015. So it's almost been six years now. And that road is completely crack free even today. And it's wonderful. So if you ever visit uh, Bangalore. That's go, actually wonderful to know. Yeah. Go see our road and you will. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I think we all should. We all should see Thank and you. also get inspired also with these kind of innovations. So uh, would I uh, want to understand one more thing. Like how, how, did you, how, how did you identify like there is a need for such kind of innovation? Like what, what was actually a kind of a kickstarter or what gave you a uh, that hint that okay we really need to need to uh, like create such kind of innovation okay so it comes from two different systems one is the uh, the our desire to reduce the carbon footprint of our system okay. of our you know environmental uh, of our infrastructure system so as you know our infrastructure in india for example the carbon emission from infrastructure it amounts to almost 40% of your total emissions, 40%. And I don't know if you read the IPCC report just, just came out two days ago. What that means is India has a lot 
to do in terms of reducing its carbon emissions, right? That's the first yeah. reason. Second is our roads do not last very long. As you know, the rural roads, they last less than two years. So mm -hmm. our innovation is driven by both of those uh, major problems. One is, yes, your carbon emissions are very high. And secondly, you want to make sure that these roads actually last much, much longer. And third, I'll add is the cost. We also want to build these roads at minimum cost. So number of villages can benefit without having to spend large amounts of money. Okay. So, um, so talking about these uh, sustainable roads, okay, eco-friendly roads. So they, uh, there have been uh, similar kind of innovations also uh, done, uh, especially in roads. So how, how you see, like, how is your technology different from the competition in your niche? Like, if I have to say, what, what, what is the USP of this innovation? So this is a complete game changer, uh, Satna. Okay. This is not a technology which has been used before. Uh, there are no self-healing technologies out there. There have been low carbon technologies, but low carbon self-healing technologies don't exist. So we are a little bit lonely, I think, in terms of uh, competition in that sense. Okay. I'm not complaining. I think it's good to be lonely in competition. So but most majorly, if I have to say, one of the unique things about this innovation is this, uh, the process of self-healing and self-repairing. Exactly, exactly. Just so, uh, close the window. There's a noise here. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, Nimi, uh, I'm sure uh, like uh, this innovation would have had its share of high and lows and some exciting times also. So can you share some interesting incident or story while building this innovation? Yeah, I think I, more than a story, I think I'll, I'll share kind of a journey, a little bit of a journey here, I think, you know. So I am a bit of a perfectionist, and I think that's a part of the problem here in product development always. So we are always attempting at perfection, right? Okay. And we wanted all the bells and whistles in this self-healing concrete road we had designed, but that was a mistake, Soon, we realized that when you're creating something new, it's easy to get caught up in all the possibilities. Oh, I can do this, I can do that, and that would be the perfect product out there. That's a mistake, actually. Key, I believe, and this is what I learned through the process, is to let the first generation of the product itself in the user hands. And it's okay. amazing when the users give you that feedback, that's okay. your best teacher towards innovating further. So I can sit in my lab and think about, oh, that will be the issue, that will be the issue. But I am missing out on the user feedback. And that's the key to, you know, what they call a, uh, call a, call a lean, lean uh, innovation model. You get the first generation out and learn from it. And that was our mistake. I think we were spending far too much time to just perfect the system. And that with a lot of people when uh, they they are into that process of creating something which they believe in they w just want to make sure that it's it should be perfect from every sense exactly. so it happens with lo so yeah so but what you said was actually right we should always like try to get first thing out take the feedback from people and then build on it as it, we proceed. exactly but well, they are your best teacher a user is yeah. True, true, true. Okay, no. So, uh, so uh, like on the path of creating something unique or iconic or memorable, a lot of us get overwhelmed with challenges. So like, how do you motivate yourself to bounce back when you are faced with a challenge? Uh, so this is, uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, <laughs> so what I do when I'm faced with an issue I count on my blessings and I recall the things that I'm grateful for. Every time you're down, you're facing a challenge. I think we all forget what we are actually grateful for. 
And for me, a feeling of gratitude is the most potent motivator of all. The moment you feel how grateful and how lucky you are in life to have good health, to have great parents, to have wonderful family, to have everything that you can perhaps desire for, and many people don't have that, that really helps you motivate you further. So my answer to that is to just I count my blessings as to how fortunate I have been. That's actually like one of the best ways to overcome difficult times or challenges and keep oneself like motivated towards goal. Uh, Nemi, your uh, journey, your work and your accomplishments are very inspiring. So uh, any message or a piece of advice for aspiring Indian entrepreneurs? Ah, that's a good, very good question. That's a very good question, yes. What should I say? Well, work smart, but not only hard. We all work hard, of course, but you have to work smart. Know your market. Talk to experts. That's very important that you talk to experts. Nobody knows everything. You know? So talk to experts and believe that continued innovation is the key to success. Don't ever think that you have a product which is the best in the world. Continue to innovate. I mean, you look at all of these innovative products out there. Anybody who designed them, they never stopped to innovate. You never sit on your laurels. You continue to innovate. You continue to make your product better because you will be, you will be out competition, competition very, very soon. Somebody will come in the field and take that product away from you and you would have no, not, nothing left to show for. So continue to innovate. The best never rest, as they say, but work smart. You have to always work smart. And the last thing I would say, I think, to, to, to these budding entrepreneurs is have a work-life balance. I have, had a, I have seen a lot. I think all of us are like really struggling to <laughs> have a work-life balance. We all talk about it, but no one, I think, really does know like how to do it or how to achieve it. Yeah, but I think it's very important. I think for success is to have really that, that work-life balance because success only comes to people who are comfortable with themselves. And if you're stressed out about life, if you're constantly worried about, uh, you know, uh, just just overworked up over certain things, the success runs away in many cases. So the idea is to have that work-life balance. Go for a walk, talk to your family, go celebrate. So always have that side of your life as well, which is very, very important. Uh, Nemi, thanks for giving us your time. This conversation has been very inspiring to all of us over here. And uh, with Bharatwani, we we really were hoping that we connect with more and more inspiring innovators like you and encourage people to keep innovating and represent India at national and global level. We genuinely thank you for your time and we really wish you a great day and good health. Thank you kindly, Sapna. Very, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. And please, uh, you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.